Hello, everyone. Let's give me a round of applause, not for me, but for the people who are going to be here in a minute. Okay, we've got a treat for you today. About a year and a half ago, maybe it was about, maybe about a year ago, I came across this amazing concept somewhere on the internet. And I've been dealing with frontiers of technology for 10, 15 years. Nothing surprises me, nothing excites me anymore. Things are exciting for other people. For me, it's like, we've seen it, we know it. So as somebody who is a kind of a futurist, for me to get excited about something is a big deal. It happens once every, I don't know, couple of years. I saw one thing, amazed me so much. I chased the guys, I sat down, and I had one of the most fascinating conversations I've had in a while with this person. And afterwards, I was like, oh my God, I am so happy to be alive. Just to live in this time, to be experiencing something as powerful as this concept. And that concept is something that we're going to try a live demo with today. God knows if it will go well. If it doesn't go well, it's because it is really live. We are truly going to be connecting from Barcelona to Australia to activate a bunch of brain cells sitting in a Petri dish to play the game of Pong. And it is as fascinating as it sounds. And this collaboration for us to bring this thing together was not easy, right? So this is done with the CEO and founder of Cortical Labs, the, the stars and superheroes, Han Wing Chong, and in collaboration with AIS, our partner in this. And where is Rod? So I want to give you a shout out. Rod, the CEO of and, and, and the co-founder of, of, of AIS, who have made this and his team have been here tirelessly working to make this thing a reality for you today to have a fantastic show. So without further ado, let's give this thing a try and see if it works. Please welcome to the stage the CEO of Cortical Labs, Han, please. Good luck, man. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Zena. Hello. Hello, Puzzle X Barcelona. Thank you very much for inviting me uh, to talk. It's uh, been a bit of a long trip coming all the way from Australia up to Barcelona, but what a wonderful and amazing city you guys have here. It's amazing. It's, uh, it's, it, the, the weather is just like back in Australia, but we're going to summer. So very jealous of the, the, the great scenery and um, uh, weather you have here. So what are we doing today? And let me talk to you a little bit about what we do at Cortical Labs. So some of you who you know, watch the news and follow sort of the general trends in, in science and technology may have come across some news lately about uh, brain cells in a dish that have learned how to play the video game Pong. Now, that company is us. Um, and I'm very proud to be talking to you a little about what we do and giving you a little bit of a glimpse of what happens in, in the whole process. So here's the, the big question. Why do we do what we do? And right now, there's actually a race um, by the big tech companies, um, and we're included as well, to build artificial generalized intelligence. Now, what is artificial generalized intelligence? We have AI, artificial intelligence. What's this G in it? And the concept really is that the artificial intelligence that we have today are very good at very specific tasks. Image recognition, speech recognition, some language modeling and generation. But what we really want are intelligence that from some people believe human level intelligence, some people believe even just animal level intelligence. Things that rapidly learn, things that can actually, you know, I guess, adapt to new surroundings, uh, ability to learn how to learn. Those are properties of generalized intelligence. Now, you know, there are very famous companies like DeepMind working on this using reinforcement learning. OpenAI is doing this with um, large language models, uh, Meta also, um, and, you know, obviously Google. Um, but for us, we looked at it and said, well, um, the only true generalized intelligence that we know of is you and I, or even our dog or our cat. What are, what, what is, what's the commonality between all of these things? And that's biology, right? Um, they all have a central nervous system, a brain made up of neurons. Um, and we said, why don't we use the same substrate, the same material that gives us all intelligence to try to tackle this question of artificial generalized intelligence 
using an alternative pathway. And so we are building artificial generalized intelligence using synthetic biology. So we're going to move on to the next slide. And this here, I have the same chip that's being held there, is a CMOS, copper metal oxide um, multi-electrode array device. And right in the center portion here, this little green section, which is smaller than the size of my pinky nail. There are 22,000 electrodes, 17 microns in pitch, 10 microns in diameter, um, which is about a tenth of the width of the human hair. And that is a scanning electron microscopy image of what we grow on this chip. And you can see in the background, there are silhouettes of a, of a grid. That's actually the electrodes. And right on top of that, you can think of it as you know, looking like melted cheese. Those are the neurons. To walk you through a little bit why this is important, it's because of the fact that each of these electrodes, you can think of it as being a bit of nails, and the neurons are sitting on top of it. And neurons communicate via electricity to one another. So when one neuron wants to send a message to the other one, it generates a little bit of voltage and it sends it across the line, and that neuron takes that information in with a bunch of other ones and decides, do I want to pass it on to the next one, and so forth. So because we have that ability to read the electrical activity um, and uh, stimulate them, what we've done here is summarized by a recent paper that we published in the journal Neuron. And uh, there are three things that we, we do in order to make this happen. Firstly, we have to cultivate and keep alive these brain cells. This is a process that is laborious, time consuming, uh, because you do have to keep these cells alive in a very large incubated setting. So, you know, for reference, that's about the size of a mini fridge. Um, and, you know, every 48 hours or 24 hours, we take them out, we take out 50% of the fluid and put new 50% in. Um, but there's also a risk of potential hazards for contamination and so forth. Um, so it, it is a hard task, and, you know, we have a fantastic team that, that are looking after the cells. The second thing, as I said, you know, this recording and processing of the signals, right? Because we now have the ability to read and write to the neurons, right? What we've then done is we said, why don't we build a computer game, the uh, legendary first video game ever made, Pong, and connect it up to the neurons, right? Because if we are going to try to do artificial intelligence, it does seem to be the case that Pong is the one that everyone goes for. Uh, DeepMind did it way back in, I think, 20, 2008. Uh, Elon did it recently with, with a couple of his monkeys. And uh, we're now doing it with Super of Neurons. So um, we're going to go and uh, talk a little bit about what we're going to see right here today. So we're at Puzzle X right here in Barcelona. And the neurons, well, you know, they're in Australia at the moment. Um, and so we're going to show what happens when you get a bunch of these, you know, happy looking neurons on a dish in Australia connected by the internet, right? This is amazing. We've never done this before, so hopefully this goes off without a hitch. And we're going to connect the neurons up via the internet to PuzzleX here in Barcelona, and we're going to try to get them to play this game of Pong. So, Meanwhile, in Australia, you know, it's uh, Hi everyone. This is my, my chief scientific officer, Brett. Labs here in Melbourne, Australia, in uh, Cortical Labs. Here's where we do some of our work and grow the cells. This is one of our incubators where we actually have living cells sitting in here. This keeps them at the right temperature with the right gases and safe from all those nasty bacteria or bugs that can be out there uh, because they don't have immune systems yet. And here's inside what our incubator looks like. So we have some stem cells growing over here. We've got a bunch of different multi-electrode arrays and plates that are growing. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab these are one of the chips that we use. And we're going to bring it over to the second incubator. Sorry, guys, it's hard to do this with one hand. And this is what we've got. And you can see we've got a few different types of chips here, a few different types of technology that we're playing with. And we're going to take these guys and we're going to pop it into a little multi-electrode array. 
And now it'll be set for Han over there to uh, engage with you. And while he's setting that up, let me bring you over to our lab. And you can see here's an example of some of the cells that we have sitting on the microscope. And this is a little screen of it. So let's just get that focus right. There we go. And you can see here, these are actually these things right here, the electrode traces running down. And then you've got all the different cells that are uh, forming on the plate here. So that's all set up here from Melbourne, Australia. I'm sure you guys are going to have a blast with everything that Han's going to be able to show you with what these uh, little devices can uh, start to learn to do. Well, there. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. And uh, so, first time, are we ready to see this happen? Intermediate videos. Okay, Hon, uh, I'm very nervous. <laughs> so am I, Rod, so am I. Let, let's hope this goes off without a hitch. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Okay, so, so we are making history together, and uh, here with the AIS team, uh, we are going to be online with the, those little guys in Melbourne in uh, five, four, three, two, one. We are online with the lab. Yep. Aha! We have it. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, oh. this is a live demonstration of the neurons in a dish playing Pong. Uh, let me walk you through what's going on here. So, um, this here is a raster plot. This is, uh, you can think of it, you know how I said there were 22,000 electrodes. Each of those pixels there are essentially that uh, electrode rolled out in a long line. Every dot that you see there is an electrical impulse that the neurons are generating. Um, that game is the, the Pong game. That paddle is being controlled by the neurons, and uh, that is the signal that we are sending it. So essentially what we do is we say, hey, um, neurons, uh, that red dot there is actually a signal where we give it the information that it missed using uh, sort of random noise, so we, we try to discourage them from missing. And um, what happens is that uh, we, we, we tell the neurons, OK, uh, you're a paddle, here's a ball, the ball is closer to center, the ball is closer to the edge, bottom edge, uh, the top edge. Um, and we feed that information in. Every time it hits the paddle, which is a good thing, we say, good on you, um, we're going to give you a predictable signal. So a predictable signal could be something like a sine wave, right? Because from one period, you can predict the next number of n number of periods. Um, and if they miss, as I said, we give it sort of random information, you know, very unpredictable signal. And what's amazing is that doing this after five minutes, we show that there is actually a statistically significant improvement in the ability for these neurons to return the ball. And I think this is a phenomenal achievement. It's never been done before, and we're very excited about the future where this leads to. So, Han, we see that it's missing, right? I mean, it is, this is not a computer playing. The fact that it was missing the target, this is like a baby learning, right? Is it learning in real time right now? Absolutely. So I think the thing is it's doing it in real time, and unlike artificial intelligence, there is no training inference. It's doing it at the same time. See, it's just going to miss right now, right? Yeah, okay, it, it miss. misses. It takes, a four, it takes some trial and error for it to get better. Now, it's not even a baby. I, we, would, we would 
describe it as being like a flat cockroach because it's got 800,000 to a million neurons, but they're all flat, no structure to it. So even with that kind of simplicity, they're doing a pretty good job, I'd say. I, it, this is fascinating to me because what we wanted to show was that, that the paddle is being controlled by the cells and the, 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 the ball is being controlled by a computer, right? If it was playing perfectly, it was a computer versus a computer, it always gets it right, right? That's, that, the beauty is that this is a new form of intelligence we haven't seen. We have the human intelligence, we have the AI, and now we have a third kind of intelligence. Correct. Which was a fascinating thing that we had those one or two hours of sitting down yep. and geeking out over this. Absolutely. So, where is this go? Do we know where this is going? So, to be fair, we don't really know where this is going to go. It's so new. And as the discovery of any new material, um, as you've, you've very light, you know, uh, enlightened me, is a process of discovery where we build applications around this. Uh, I mean, we, we're already working with some fantastic partners to look at potentially using this technology for uh, drug development, drug discovery. We've had partners looking at using this for I guess, artificial intelligence task. We've had a whole bunch of students saying, I just love this stuff. Give me some neurons and I want to, you know, get it to trade Bitcoin or something like that. So, so we've got these, so what, can we, and this is what you and I talked about. I said, okay, someday in the metaverse or in the virtual world, there will be representatives of people. We will have avatars, there will be that. There will be AI who will have a representation. And then there will be another habitat. Yes. It would be the third kind of intelligence. Yes. So perhaps these neurons could have a life even yes. though they don't have arms and legs in the physical world, they can have a life in the virtual world? Quite possibly. And I think what's really exciting for us is the fact that the, the cells that you saw um, up there are actually human cells. They're grown from stem cells. And they're taken from donors like you and I. And what that means is that those cells have similar properties to us. If we give them, the if we, sorry, if we give them drugs, they should respond the same way as the drugs given to me. And I think this is extremely powerful, especially when you know, people are newly diagnosed with a certain condition and they have to try different drugs. Why do it on yourself when you can do it on, a, on an actual biological dish twin? Absolutely. Right? And, and I think one of the things that we've said is that we've had this conversation. People ask me, what is the application? Where is it going to be used? And what we talked about was this. Think of this 60, 70 years ago. When that first transistors in the Bell Labs was introduced, did we know that it was going to give birth to this, to us being able to have a digital presence and doing everything that we cannot imagine our lives without these days. This is a first. We just tried a first here in Barcelona. So yeah. please give a round of applause to the creator of this concept, Han. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also, thank you so much. Thank you. Tina, Han, I need to tell you that we don't only have those little guys online. We also have over 12,000 live viewers in AIS channel following this historical Great, 12,000 other people saw Amazing. this first, right? Fantastic. Amazing. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. much.